Believe it or not, the mass-produced, relatively affordable electric car has been on offer for over two years now. So in car terms, it's high time for a midlife refresh. Now the Nissan LEAF will go farther on a charge, you can get fancy leather seats, and it's cheaper. But that's not what's interesting. What's interesting is that Nissan is the only car company that manufactures its own batteries. What's less interesting is it's taken me over two years to talk Shiro into let me roam around said battery factory. The most basic building block or root level of a battery is the electrode. This is the part that conducts either the positive or negative polarity called anode and cathode. They don't arrive at the factory size for the application. Instead, much like the body panels, they arrive as a mother roll that's cut into smaller rolls or sheets that are then processed and dried at very high temperatures. Now we move on to the next step, which is creating the cell. An easy way to think about this is to make an electronic version of a sandwich. To create the completed cell, we need to cut the electrode into the correct size. Then we move on to layering. Layering much like a club sandwich, but instead of bacon, lettuce, and tomato, it's anode, separator, cathode. Those layers are then connected by tabs, which are welded. Then we take those stacked layers and we seal them in aluminum foil. Are you a fan of Gatorade? If so, you're going to love this next part. Electrolyte injection. Riddle me this, what do batteries and distance runners have in common? They both get a jolt out of electrolytes. But um bum but seriously folks. The electrolyte is the liquid that enables the ions to pass between the positive and negative layers in the cell. Now in the previous step, we laminated the cells. Here we move to a clean room and inject electrolytes to enable the now completed battery cell to hold a charge. So let's talk winemaking, shall we? In the winemaking process, you crush the grapes and then you make the wine, whatever that process is, fermenting, I guess. And then it's turned into a casket to age. The same thing happens here. So welcome to the vineyard of Tennessee, but instead of wine, we have batteries. They're put in these milk crates, not as sexy as oak caskets, and they're aged to a certain amount of time, and then my friend here comes and takes him to the next step. Let's go find out where that is. So now we have rich man's problems. How are we going to fit this into this? Have you ever played with Legos before? You know how they stack on top of each other? We're going to do just that in module assembly. Now we're going to put the cell into the car, but really we need to stop and think about this step. We're about to install a completed aged and charged battery cell into a moving vehicle, so one would think it prudent to protect said battery cells. So we're going to do some more layering and then wrap the whole module in metal casing. So if you've been paying attention, we now have four of these for every one of these, but we still have to test the module. That's what happens here. Each one of these are charged, then discharged, and then there's a test for the connectivity which will ultimately end up in the car. Once they pass test here, they go across the road to where the cars are constructed, and then 48 of these make their way into a leaf. So if you get your abacus out, we end up with 192 of these. It's at the last step where we transition from something that looks an awful lot like a computer factory to something that you and I are significantly more familiar with, car factory. This is where we take the completed battery pack and we install it underneath the floorboards. This way, the weights distribute evenly and it powers the car. But how we just did all this is not nearly as significant as where we did all this. We just built an electric car and its battery for the first time ever in the United States of America.